taking the Laplace transform of a function if a step function is involved is straightforward. We will basically only need to adjust an integration boundary, as you will see in this video. The true importance is in a general formula that involves a step function. This general formula is mainly used for inverse Laplace transforms and will give us yet another class of functions for which we can find the inverse Laplace transform. So how does this work? So the Laplace transform just of a step function first. So we have a UC. Plug in the UC at the usual place. Now we can split up the integral into parts from zero to C and from C to infinity. That's what we do over here. And uh, you see a zero, of course, uh, on, the, on this first part. So this part drops out. Uh, so we are left only with the second term over here. And we can integrate explicitly. Uh, so we find an antiderivative minus one over s times the exponential between the boundaries. Upper boundary gives us zero for s positive, And the lower boundary gives us an e to the power minus cs over s with the additional minus sign because we are on the lower boundary. So one more example with a step function. Determine the Laplace transform of h of t where h of t equals a uc of t but now times some other function. So what do we do? Again plug in h of t over here. So what basically happens is what does the step function do? Well it starts at c so uh, it basically shifts the integration boundary from 0 to c because the integration from 0 to c is 0 anyway and from c on you are 1 so we integrate from c up to infinity we can simplify the exponentials take them together so we have this function over here and then we can find the antiderivative 1 over 2 minus s times this exponential uh, between the boundaries and uh, if uh, s is bigger than 2, we can uh, 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 compute this because then the upper boundary drops out and we are left with this function over here, only the lower boundary. And we re can rewrite this a bit, uh, minus 1 over 2 minus s equals 1 over s minus 2. We have an e to the power minus cs and we have an e to the power 2c. So that is what our Laplace transform looks like. So why did we rewrite this in this way? Well, we can now observe the following. Our h of t, that is h of t over here, equals uc of t times e to the power 2t, but we can rewrite e to the power 2t as e to the power 2 times t minus c plus 2c. So we can write our h of t as uc e to the power 2 times t minus c times e to the power 2c. Okay, so far so good. Why did we do this? So we basically rewrote h of t as e to the power tc times 2c times g of t, where g of t equals uc of t times e to the power 2 times t minus c. But now we see the following. Our g of t is basically a step function times a shifted function f where f of t is e to the power 2t in this case. And when we have that, we observe that if we can rewrite our uh, g like this, that the Laplace transform of h, which was e to the power 2c times the Laplace transform of g. So what do we did we get? We get, basically got this e to the power 2c, and we got uh, as our Laplace transform e to the power minus cs here, this e to the power minus cs, times 1 over s minus 2, and it's 1 over s minus 2 is exactly the Laplace transform of f. So what, did, so what did we get? The Laplace transform of g, which was of this form, is exactly e to the power minus cs times the Laplace transform of f. Well, that holds more general. If your g of t is some shifted function f, then the Laplace transform of g of s is the Laplace transform of f, and what does this shift do? What does this u of, uh, u of c is the t minus c do? It only adds an e to the power minus cs over there. And 
Again, the proof of this general formula is uh, straightforward. How, how does it work? Well, if your g of t is a function like this, what do we get for your capital G of s? Capital G of s equals the integral g of t e to the power minus ts. Uh, now, what does the u of c do? It basically starts the integral at c. Uh, what do you do then? You say, okay, I have my t minus c equals tall. I use a new integration variable. Then tall runs from zero to infinity. f of t minus c becomes f of tall dt. Uh, uh, t minus c equals tall, so dt equals d tall, that's the same. And uh, t minus c equals tall is t uh, equals tall plus c. That's what's coming in over here. And uh, then you see you can factor out this e to the power minus cs, you can take it in front, and you have this integral over here, which is simply uh, the Laplace transform of f, but tall is just an integration variable. So you get your g, capital G of s equals e to the power minus cs times capital F of s. And where this is mainly used is if your capital G of s equals some known capital F of s, known in the sense that you can transform it back times e to the power minus cs, then you can find, if you can find your small f of t, that's the idea, then you can also find your small g of t, because then your small g of t is the shifted uh, small f of t. So the small f of t minus c times the step function. So that is how this formula is mainly used.